The following is an encore presentation of stories from the Duralong Transformation Centre. T49 this morning, and I'm with Ruth from the Duralong Transformation Centre. Good morning, Ruth. Good morning. Of course, we're going to be talking about it this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Ruth, we're going to uh, have a bit of a chat about your journey. So let's start with where do you come from? I grew up in Sydney mm -hmm. um, in a Christian family, Catholic Christian family, and went to Catholic schools, mm -hmm. went on to university, uh, did medicine. Oh, wow. And um, following uni, I worked in a number of areas for five years, and then um, but by that stage I was married and living outside Dorigo mm -hmm. in um, uh, mid-north coast area so I worked in Dorigo for about 30 years as a general practitioner beautiful part of the world oh magnificent did you ever jump off the falls no I've no I that. was not that brave <laughs> <laughs> yeah no magnificent place so I worked there for 30 years um when the ch when when I had the children I worked limited days but they were pretty long hours um I raised three sons Mm -hmm. I didn't help out a lot on the property, but work was always beautiful. Yeah. And um, and uh, we we were on on the property after hours, so it was a bit of an idyllic existence. Um, certainly the ideal way to raise three sons. Yes, yes. And so the journey into Duralong, what happened there? Along the way. I realised in my late thirties that I was, and I'll put it in AA terms, I was powerless over life. Mm -hmm. There were a lot of things coming up and I didn't have the skills to deal with it. Uh, I didn't realise that I had a lot of areas where I really hadn't grown up. Well, I knew I hadn't grown up, but a mm -hmm. lot of areas I didn't have the, the language, uh, didn't have the emotional... Um, intelligence if you like to deal with things yeah um i'm talking this way now because i've got a lot better idea of it but at the time i didn't um and so i used to talk to god over the kitchen sink yeah at home and ask him also to help with my patience uh looking after my patients that is and, okay um and that i could look after them and love them for the sake of god rather than just for my sake because I loved them yeah. but look after them for love of God and and um, God very much responded to that and asked me to surrender to him and to follow him and that was pretty amazing now I don't normally talk about this on to other people but sort of up front but perhaps it's part of the part of my journey yes along the way after that um, I uh, looked I had the most wonderful experience of of God, you know, present in my heart, in my being. Mm -hmm. Things got more and more difficult for me in terms of managing and coping, and I got overwhelmed rather than turning, continuing to hand myself lock, stock and barrel over to God, mm -hmm. I took back the edge of the towel, if you like, and I kept taking back and trying to do things my way yes and that didn't work at all and in my middle 50s i was in a situation where i had taken on extra responsibilities at home um for family um reasons and it was way beyond my capacity to manage and i started ha having a drink after work or of an evening going around watering the garden and um, then um, that became more and more and that sort of started in about 2004 and by 2008 I realized well and truly that I was in addiction wow um, yeah. yeah all right well that past 10 and we have Ruth in the studio from the Duralong Transformation Center and uh, just proof that you know anyone and everyone can get themselves into trouble in time um and and, and it sounds a little bit like your um your, your alcoholism was a bit of a drip 
fed trouble. You sort of started with the one after work and then it sort of just got a little bit worse over that four-year period of 2004 to 2008. Of course, Ruth, being a doctor and also a Christian, is, is just proof that anyone can get themselves into this situation. Now, we've seen, we've seen doctors, we've seen lawyers, we've seen so many different types of people that have gone through Duralong because you get to a point where you realise you want to make a difference in yourself. Now, you, you sort of... Uh, at 2008 said to yourself I know I have a problem yes right what happened then Ruth well I still thought that I could deal with it myself mm-hmm. um, I talked to God about it mm-hmm. but I wasn't ready to put my hand up and, yep. and go for uh, more active treatment I spoke to a friend of mine about it who was a, a fellow GP um, perhaps a year or two after that mm-hmm. and she realised the change in me yeah. because I was becoming more irritable, more discontented, a lot more difficult at home. Yeah. Um, I was becoming yeah, just edgy and critical. Yeah, Not so much at work but I think I was just not the relatively calm person that I had previously been at work. Yes. And um, in 2011, I realised I had to do something about it and rang a friend of mine who was a nurse at, she was a friend of my brother's and a nurse at one of the um, short-term rehabs in Sydney. Yes. And um, I ended up going in there in the November of that year my colleague was backing me all the way and she was really encouraging me strongly to do so. Yeah. While I was in there, uh, my secretary, uh, secretary at the practice rang me and uh, uh, about something and she said, I hope you're having a good holiday or something like that. And I said, well, actually, um, I'm, I'm in rehab. I'm an alcoholic. And there was a pause at the other end of the phone. Mm-hmm. Oh, um, because she had no idea, I, I don't think. Because I didn't drink at work. So you were a, a, a high-functioning alcoholic? What they say, high-functioning, but an alcoholic's an alcoholic. Mm-hmm. I wasn't terribly high-functioning when it came to going home and uh, not having breaks when it came to talking to people, yep. necessarily. Um, yes, yeah, so um, from there, I went into Duralong... I announced to... So that was 2011, the oh, no, short-term short yes. rehab, yep. Sorry, not do along. It was a rehab in Sydney. Um, and I had about uh, eight or so stints in, in um, three, many three rehabs. During all short-term? That, all short-term. Yep. Uh, before I came to do along. I did get two years of sobriety up in the middle, 2014 to 2016. Mm-hmm. But then um, I started having the odd drink, uh, which was a slippery slope. I was being monitored during this period of time by the uh, appropriate um, registration authorities. Yep. um, And having regular meetings with them. And so, you know, I was doing everything by the book. Yep. Uh, Medical council were where um, I was meeting with quite regularly and so on. Um, yes, yeah, so I went back, I took a couple of years off working too, a year and a half off working and went back working um, in a different place in 2015 where I didn't have to do on call and I thought that that might help. I think a lot of it also was... was a bit of burnout and there were a number of things yeah. that, so um and i went okay again for a while but mm-hmm. st- started as i said um back on the slippery slope this last uh, the last two and a half years of my drinking was really difficult mm-hmm. they say that the addiction is sitting in the back room doing its push-ups um, and certainly um, when I tried to give it away again, it's been so much harder than it had been previously. Yep. Um, just really, really hard. So 
I realised that the only thing I could do was to go into long-term rehab. Mm -hmm. I tried various rehabs. I applied to different rehabs, long-term rehabs, and um, including Duralong, which I'd heard about from a friend. But Duralong gave me a date that they could accept me. Yes. And the others didn't get back to me. Mm -hmm. So I took it that that was the one that I was meant to go to. Mm -hmm. And I feel very much that, that that's the case. Yep. So I went into Duralong having had three weeks, again, at a short-term rehab um, to get sober. Um, and so I haven't drunk since the 27th of December, except for a glitch when I went home in March. Okay. Um, that was only... But very little. It was a bit left in the bottom of a bottle that I found and demolished. Um, <laughs> I was home last weekend and it wasn't till the end of the weekend that I noticed, oh, there's some beer in the fridge. Um, and I hadn't even, it, must, it would have been sitting there and I hadn't even noticed. Yep. Um, my husband doesn't drink, so I guess one of the boys left it there when they were home. Yeah, okay. So it's sort of, uh, y you're getting to a point where you're thinking, this is really starting to work for me. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So you've been at Duralong since December? Since January. Since January? Yeah. 17th of January. Okay. And how do you find the difference in Duralong? Obviously, it's a, it's a long-term uh, rehab as opposed to the short-term rehabs that you've been to. Actually, what we might do is unpack that on 94.9 this morning. And we have Ruth in the studio from the Duralong Transformation Centre. Ruth's been there since January this year. And uh, not her first st uh, stint in a rehab, been to a few short-term ones in Sydney and then out to Duralong. What a ma massive change, Ruth. <laughs> now, the question was, what's the difference between a short-term rehab and Duralong? In the short-term rehab, um, I was in the private ones that go for 21 days. The health funds cover 21 days. Um, on the appropriate table uh, in, a, in a private rehabilitation centre. Mm -hmm. um, and you can go in there, be detoxed from the addiction, from the uh, substance, whether it be alcohol or, um, or other drugs, or gambling, mm -hmm. um, you know, the, uh, sex addiction. There's a number of different addictions that can be treated. And uh, the ones that I went to, there are quite a lot of lectures on the process of addiction, mm -hmm. uh, neurobiological things and uh, physiological changes in the brain in addiction, what effect it has on the rest of the body. And it's very useful, I think, to have that. I haven't been into a public rehabilitation, but I think that they are more detoxes yep. and then from the public detox you then go into the longer term sure now these short term ones you've been to in sydney obviously there's there's a lot of information so you've, yes. you've gained information but what about you know in between your own ears how, how does it affect you going to short term as opposed to the long term the problem is that you have to accept yourself that you have a problem and three weeks is not long enough for a lot of people to accept that they've got a problem. They might be pushed in there by parents who um, have the health funds to be able to, you know, or the money to be able to put their, their kids in there or their young people in and the kids don't want to go. Um, there all sorts of things. And 21 days isn't long enough really mm. to, to move on very far yep. if you're not really ready for it. Yes. Long term... Um, is up to six to nine or 12 months yep. in a facility where you might not get the same initial teaching. There is some teaching. Um, and along the way, there are different stages in, in Duralong where you learn a lot more about yourself yep. and about your own motivations, your own issues yep. that, and how they impact on your life. And you learn to live life on life's terms. You can't do that in three weeks. Absolutely. How much long do you think you'll be up at Duralong? A month or two. Yep. I think. I, I was initially going there for 12 weeks only. Um, and it's now 
17 weeks, I think, and um, I think I'll be there for, I'll stay for another month or two because I'm learning. Yes. I'm learning stuff. The, I haven't been to another long term, but I'm really pleased that I've gone to do a wrong. Yes. Because it is such a lovely campus, for one thing. Yeah. But also because of the Christian aspect, which is quite different from, and it's quite different from what I expected. You know, I knew it was a Salvation Army place and I, I didn't know, you know, I just, I just went in saying, okay, you know, it was obviously going to be Christian, but there's a lot... A real spiritual uh, backbone there, huh? There's a real, but a real spiritual in that people are, are loved, yep. essentially. Um, you know, there's glitches here and there and people fall through the cracks, but overall there's quite an amazing camaraderie between the participants. There's a lot of support from the staff and there are some beautiful people on staff. Yeah. Um, there's every opportunity to learn if you want to learn and even if you don't want to learn, it just grows on you a bit, I think. Yeah, yeah. Chapel is quite amazing. On a Wednesday night there's chapel and I have three sons aged in their 30s. They went through Catholic schools, primary and secondary, they went to boarding school and secondary school um, because of distance and family situations and so on. They, um, are, but I've not seen kids in their 20s and 30s so keen to go to chapel uh -huh. to listen and to sing at the top of their voices, some of them with tears running down their face. Mm -hmm. A lot of people moved, really, really moved by the Spirit. And, um, and knowing personally that there is a God who loves them. Yep, makes such a big difference. And it? yes, the God who is there in their own heart and who, who is with them through thick and thin. Yeah. And I've not seen that before. Yeah. Um, and that to me has been just absolutely wonderful. That's awesome. Yeah. Mm. And so what are your plans in two or three months' time? I'm not sure. I've got quite a lot of background. I've done a lot of, you know, in my medicine, I did the, the full gamut. I didn't do deliveries, but I looked after babies shortly after delivery and I for the last 20 years that I was practicing in uh, I did a lot of the palliative care yep. so I want to make use of that in a different direction yeah okay. and um, I've been looking at maybe chaplaincy or something in that line or I don't know and I guess I'll just I guess God will show me keep praying on it yeah he'll show me what he wants me to do he hasn't been back at incoming forward before that's awesome awesome well, Ruth, thank you so much for unpacking your story. We're speaking to Ruth from the Duralong Transformation Centre. And uh, what an amazing story going through. I, I guess it's it's been a, a long haul for you and um, you seem a whole lot happier, like talking about this end of the recovery. Just look at your face from when you were talking about the early days, sort of changing to, to, to sort of the Duralong side of things and... You almost looked excited about all those people in chapel. That was cool. <laughs> I, I um, didn't realise early on when I was only a social drinker, um, and that's all I was, I didn't realise that I was, to all uh, uh, intents and purposes, I was a dry drunk. Mm -hmm. And I had no idea of that. So this is God's way of, of showing me the person that I, I could be. Yep. Um, and uh, uh, getting some wholeness into my life. That's awesome. In, into my being. Yeah, all right. approach things. Well, thank you so much for coming in this morning, Ruth. We appreciate you unpacking that story and uh, wish you well with the next couple of months at Duralong and your time after when you get out. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're on 94. You've been listening to an encore presentation of the Duralong Stories, which can be heard live every Wednesday at 10 a.m. and repeated 8 p.m. Sunday and 1 a.m. Wednesday, right here on 94.9 rima.cc.